And from journalists to those that call Gaza home, more than 20,000 people have now been killed in this war against Hamas, with thousands more people injured. And someone who has been there fighting to save lives is a British surgeon who led an emergency medical team in central Gaza. Dr. Nick Maynard says that the call to duty was beyond anything he has ever seen in his career. Nick joins me now from Oxford. So Nick, appreciate you joining us. Uh, I know you are safely uh, back home, but this assignment uh, was by far one of the toughest ones for you. I know you were working within Al-Aqsa Hospital. Tell us why you had to leave. So thank you very much for asking me on your show tonight. I had been working in Al-Aqsa Hospital for, for two weeks, uh, or just under two weeks. We were scheduled to be there for two weeks, and on Friday, at the end of last week, I was operating in, the, in, in one of the operating theatres there on a serious um, explosive blast injury to a patient with multiple abdominal injuries. And I finished at about quarter to three and came out of the operating theatre to hear that there had been a missile attack on the intensive care unit of Alaxa Hospital. And there were rumours of um, snipers near the hospital um, killing uh, uh, civilians nearby. We went back to our accommodation that night, and every evening when we're there, we have to our, our, our ground staff liaise with the with COGAT, which is part of the Israeli Defence Force, to check that what the security is like for the following day, and. Um, we enter via a deconflicted zone in order to go to Alaxa, and we were told that night by Kogat that the area was no longer deconflicted, uh, meaning that there would be Israeli ground forces very close to the hospital, and it was no longer safe for anyone to go to the hospital. So we were forced to withdraw our services from the hospital. Uh, there was another team from Médecins Sans Frontières Hospital, uh, Doctors Without Borders, who also were forced to withdraw, and we were therefore not able to complete our two-week mission. We had to withdraw for that for that for last weekend, and we left Gaza on Monday. And it just became too dangerous for you. So you mentioned one of your patients in particular there. Tell me more about your patients and the types of injuries you were treating and also the challenges you faced as patients were coming in by the minute. So I was working mainly in the in the operating theatre. Uh, another couple of colleagues of mine were working in the ER there. I was dealing, I'm a surgeon that deals with abdominal and, and, and chest disease. I'm mainly a cancer surgeon, um, but I was obviously dealing with exclusively trauma, and I was operating on patients with major blast injuries to the abdomen and to the chest, involving damage to the lungs, usually by shrapnel, but also by bullets, and to all the abdominal organs. And they, some of these were catastrophic injuries, in, in terms of volume, they were much less than the other injuries that they were seeing in ER, which were particularly severe burn injuries and appalling injuries to the limbs, many traumatic amputations. So the orthopedic surgeons and the plastic and reconstructive surgeons were very busy with those patients. Um, but the, 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 the spectrum of injuries were, was really quite appalling and, and like nothing I've seen before. And I did spend some time in the ER uh, when when there wasn't anyone to operate on, and some of the burn injuries we were seeing, particularly in small children, were in indescribably awful. Let me ask you, since you were there, uh, you know, we are reporting over and over again uh, that the the IDF tells us that there are terrorists that are working under these hospitals, around these hospitals, uh, that these hospitals are being uh, targeted because of that. Did you witness that? Did you did you see in any way, shape, or form uh, Hamas terrorists operating in, around, or under your facilities where you were trying to save lives? Uh, no, not at all. And I, I, I've been, as, as you can imagine, following this very carefully. Um, since October the 7th, I've been talking almost daily 
uh, with colleagues in Gaza that I know well. I've been going out to Gaza for nearly 15 years to teach and to treat patients, uh, particularly in Shifa Hospital. So since October the 7th, I've been in close contact with friends and colleagues, and I am very clear that no credible evidence has been provided at all that these hospitals were being used as Hamas command centres. I would stress that I have no idea what's going on in the tunnels underneath Gaza City, so cannot comment on that. But I can certainly comment on my experience of working in Shifa Hospital in the past and my current experience in the last two weeks of being in Al-Aqsa Hospital. And there has been no credible evidence that they've been used as Hamas command centres. So I would refute that evidence completely. Dr. Nick Menard, so appreciate your time and also all that you did to save the lives, especially those children, all the innocent families that don't deserve what's going on. Appreciate you, your work and you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for asking me on your show. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.